Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. On today's show, is everybody underestimating LeBron and the Lakers? Plus, Rob Parker weighs in on the feud between Terrell Owens and Michael Irvin. And why did Jalen Ramsey throw a whole bunch of shade at opposing quarterbacks? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. I'm on the Fox Sports app. Mm. It all leads up to the Big Three Championship game from Brooklyn, August 24th mm. on Fox. Skip, you checking it out? Yes, I am. Final Four, Dallas Friday night. Corey Maggette, Baron Davis, Nate Robinson, Big Baby, Star Studded. We had the Star of Stars <laughs> Cube on yesterday yeah. with us. I'll be watching. I'm anxious to see Power. They're the number one seed. Corey Maggette, as you mentioned, Catino Mobley, Big Baby, and Birdman. They're playing the four, four seed. The only team to beat them is Tri-State, which they're playing in the first round. Mm. That's going to be very, very interesting. Skip, I'm watching Big Baby. Big Baby should drop 30 pounds and try to get back in the NBA. Skip, do you see how well he can move? Or just try to get back in the NBA. No, 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 no. Or he can come train with me. I can get him a left tackle uh, job. Really? Yeah. Mm, okay. Can he kick? If he can kick, Skip. But Jason Peters, he nimble on his feet. Mm. You're training everyone now. Yeah. Okay. Next up, the Lakers <laughs> had a major offseason shakeup. And, hey, they added several players, including some guy named LeBron. Westgate projected them to have the fourth best record in the West. But that's not enough for Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma said he has already worked out with LeBron, and both players are excited about the roster. And they both think, quote, people are underestimating us. Shannon, what do you make of this? Do so. At your own peril. Hmm. Yeah, they're underestimating. Mainly Skip Bayless. Because you keep talking about, oh, they'll Eight? be like a 7, 8 seed. Hmm. And these projections. Am I the only one who says no, that? No, no, no. Like these, everybody's saying true. Yeah, And he's huh. saying everybody's going to be huh. sadly okay. mistaken. All right. And these projections about the Lakers missing the playoffs, hmm. this is absolutely, this is asinine, Skip. That's hmm. beyond ridiculous. Oh, okay. So, as much as, go ahead. You, I thought you were finished. You, yeah, but you want to go skip? You go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go we ahead. got time. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to let you go. So as much as I like Kyle Kuzma as a young man, he's fun to be around. We had him right here on the mm. show. I was shocked to read these comments because he's starting to turn into, dare I say, Isaiah Thomas. Oh. He's sort of aligning himself with LeBron, like we're going to do this together. We've been working out together. Yeah, we're working out. Kyle had a really good rookie year, came out of nowhere, late first-round pick, obviously, and he went 16-6 and six for a, a very young, unstar-studded mm -hmm. Laker team, right? Yeah. They won 35 games, went 35-47, and 47, but he was first-team all-rookie, and all of a sudden, he's talking about wrecking the league, as Johnny Manziel once predicted he would do. That's how it's coming across to me. And how much did it offend you that Isaiah Thomas walked in the door, Cleveland, Ohio, and started talking like, I'm, I'm LeBron's co-star, like I'm his equal. Well, this started to come across like, Bron and I got this. Mm. You know, me and Bron, we're going to shock no. everybody. Yes, Isaiah rubbed me the wrong yeah. way. He yeah. came in at five foot six and a quarter and mm. hurt and pretended like he was on the same platform as LeBron James. Mm. No, mm. you were not going to come in and get no 23 shots a night. You were not going to average 30 points a game. First mm. of all, you should have got healthy first mm. and then talked later. Mm. Second of all, Skip Bayless, Kyle Kuzman says, look, I, we get it. We're a young basketball team, especially if everything goes according to plan. We think who's going to start, with the exception of LeBron. But when you bring LeBron in, Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. it's just like anything. It, when you bring the best surgeon in, look, no matter, no matter the type of surgery, when you bring the best surgeon in that field in, mm -hmm. you expect to get the job done. Mm -hmm. No mess. Everything, the mm -hmm. guy, the patient's up on his way in a matter of, in a matter of hours. So Kuz and Braun, they got this. No, 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 no Kuz, really? no Kuz and Braun. That's how it comes across. Kuzma's, they got this. They're underestimating and, us. And yet, you know, I think you might be overestimating how much Kyle Kuzma is going to get to play because right now on the depth chart, he's listed as a backup at forward Dude. to that guy. What's that guy's name? Uh, LeBron. What's the name? I mean, oh, you the know guy LeBron. from Akron. The, oh. the guy. To, he's one forward, and Brandon Ingram's really good. He's the other starting forward. So all of a sudden, Kyle Kuzma's going to be fighting for minutes with Lance Stevenson and Michael Beasley. And all of a sudden, I don't know. How many minutes is he going to get to play? I don't know. He will determine that. Okay. Is the bird in the hand? Yeah. What, what, is the bird dead of a li or alive, Skip? So, so maybe Kuz and Braun don't got this. No, 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 maybe no. Maybe no, Braun's got no, this. No, 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 no. 
He's saying yeah. that, look, as a team, yes, we yeah. have LeBron, mm. but we're going to carry our weight. We're oh, going to pull our really? load, Skip Bayless. Absolutely. Oh. oh, you don't believe they will, but they will be 19 I, games better than what they were last year. I already told you they're going to be the eight seed. Third. And history's going to repeat because they're going to get swept by – LeBron's going to get swept by Golden State for the second straight year, last year in the finals, this year in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs because he's going to be – or made to feel like a guest in the West. How about this here? And how about this here? How about so many experts who know way more NBA basketball than I know are saying, mm, hold the phone here because it doesn't look to them on all the, their statistical projections like See. LeBron's team can even make the playoffs. How about the great Kevin Pelton, one of the acknowledges one of the best at, at second level stats and projections at ESPN? He's got them 41.2 wins. That would be ninth in his projection in the West. That would be one slot out of the playoffs. It's just a projection, Skip. Yeah, and his point is that no team has been hit harder by adjustment for players changing teams because you've got all these newcomers. All of a sudden, there's a flood of newcomers. you got four really difficult-to-coach personalities being added to a young mix. So you say they're a young team. They're really a young, old team, which is Kind of bizarre, right? First of all, Skip, you know I was in 4-H. Really? I was projected to be a farmer. Uh, How'd that work out? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I know a little farm stuff. Yeah? Grew up on a farm. Yeah. yeah. Huh. You know all about livestock, cattle, hogs, chicken. Yeah. yeah. All that. Huh. But I turned out to be a what? An NFL footballer. Okay. So with that being said, Kevin Pelton, I get it. Hey, he's yeah. next level, second level, third level, fifth level. Ain't got no levels. I'm just telling you. The Los Angeles Lakers will be third or the fourth seed, and they're going to advance past the first round. Mm. Now, 55 wins, says 54. Shannon Sharp. I got 54 in the five, and we got five cases on that. Okay, five cases. I got it. You want to make it seven? Nope. I'm, I'm good. good. Okay. I'm good. All I'm right. good. I don't want you to, you know. So, here's the final piece to this puzzle. <laughs> what? We'll have um, something else. I'm yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Kyle Kuzma did not make an early reputation for having much interest in playing on the defensive end of the court. So he's defensively challenged. And his new co-star, LeBron James, finished 308th in individual defensive win shares last year. So he was not interested anymore. What about offensive win shares? Well, I'm talking about the defensive end because it can be half the battle, if not more than half the battle, when the playoffs start. So now you've got two co-stars, Kuz and Braun. It ain't no co-star. Yeah, Stop saying that. Like Kuz and Braun. <laughs> and, and they play little to no defense between them. So if they're two-fifths of the starting lineup, how, you how do said, you defend that? You already said Kuz no, was coming no, up to me. Kuz thinks he's going to be a starter. But, that's, but, but, but what, what do you think? I don't know what's going to happen. I think this. I think Luke Walton's going to get fired at midseason. How about this? I, I think something good going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think something better than last year will happen. Well, that's, 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 that goes without saying. LeBron James walks into the door. You're already 15, yeah. 20 games better than yeah, what you were I think you'll make the playoffs. You'll be the eighth seed. I love, I love how last year, I mean, you like uh, uh, head over heels. Oh, Lonzo going to take this team to the playoffs. I said to the eighth seed. And they had well, Lonzo, the Lonzo Ball take him to the eighth seed. LeBron mm-hmm. James take him to the eighth seed. Well, man, Skip, baby, you on something. Okay. Uh, Using that car with uh, Antonio that's, Callaway. That's, that's <laughs> what I was wondering what was happening to Luke Walton last year because LeVar called him out. LeVar, you can dismiss a lot of what he says, but a lot of it is just cold, <coughs> hard, stone-cold truth. And he said early on, I don't know what Luke Walton has against my son, but he's yanking him every mid-first quarter and not putting him back in the game until mid-second quarter. the coach. He that knows became an early pattern. And once that happened, I was out. I think that Lonzo basically quit on Luke Walton last year. Now, is that going to keep going? He ain't going to quit on Braun. Okay, we'll see. He ain't no we'll see. Yeah. He like L.A.? Who? Lonzo. Does he like L.A.? Yeah. Well, he grew up in okay, the area. Okay, yeah. then. Well, guess what? I mean, he won't be quitting again. Because yeah. if he like going home on a nightly basis, yeah. I suggest he'd never quit again. Okay. Because you suggest he'll be in Milwaukee if he doesn't watch Brooklyn. it? Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. That'd be a good place for him. Okay. Well, I'd kind of like to see him go somewhere else and get a fresh start out from under. Already? His yeah, I would. I don't love it here for him. I think it was wrong place, wrong time for Lonzo Ball. I did. I didn't like it. Dad's here. Brothers are here. Mom's here, family, extended family's here. It's, it's just not good for him. He needed to go somewhere and start fresh by himself and make his own name. No, that's not how they built. Uh-huh. The family's together. They stay together. They do everything together. So, yeah. Maybe two together yeah. at times. But O'Bron got it. Yeah. Bron worth 19 games. Bron, Rondo. Yeah. yeah. Lance, yeah. JaVale. Yeah. yeah. They Brandon Ingram. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know how that's going to work. KCP. Exactly. Yeah. Hart. 
This could be the worst defensive team in all of basketball. Oh, well, they have a, uh, yeah. Could you don't be get one, that part of it, though. Could be know. one of the best offensive teams in all of it basketball. It could be. Okay, we'll see if they can win. Boy, all what should be fear if they can win? Phoenix looks a lot better to me. Dallas oh. is going to be a lot better to da- me. Uh, so I don't know. So, so, huh? like the Clippers are still going to be me, a factor. So, so let me, let, I just want to make sure. Ooh. I'm the Clippers. Yeah, let me, let me make sure I'm hearing this correctly. You believe that Phoenix, DeAndre Ayton, will help Phoenix more than LeBron will help the Lakers? Trevor Ariza? Hmm? Devin Booker getting older and wiser? Ooh, they're, they're going to light up some people. They're going to take their pound of flesh. They'll beat the Lakers a couple times. And be, in the, saying, lottery, and be in the lottery again. They, they may uh-huh. be because they're in the West, and they can't help that. And who in the West? LeBron is in the exactly. West. Exactly. Yeah. And he went to the West to mess with the West. Yeah. Because he got tired of hearing your mouth and others like you talk about, oh, he's in the East. He, oh, went, he-, he went to the West so he could now chase Michael B. Jordan. That's what he did. Whatever. No mercy. Terrell Owens' absence from Canton for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony was criticized by a lot of people, including many of his fellow Hall of Famers. Michael Irvin went on the Rich Eisen show a day before the ceremony and said some of the Hall of Famers took T.O. not being there personally. Irvin also said T.O. owes it to the people to be there, but the Hall of Famers would hug him if he ever shows up to Canton. T.O. responded yesterday, tweeting, quote, Rich, he sounds ridiculous, and I don't owe anybody anything. Must be the side slash after effects of drug use. I'm going to leave it at that. Definitely won't be any hugging going on. Hashtag go Mox, which is T.O.'s alma mater. We're joined by Rob Parker, and Rob, I'm going to start with you. Was this tweet from T.O., Inbounds or out of bounds? It's inbounds from this standpoint. This is who T.O. is. And when you rub him the wrong way, <laughs> he's going to come back at you. This is just how he's wired. And, and I don't think what Michael Irvin said was the worst thing in the world. I don't. No. I, I really don't. But I think T.O. felt like his character was being assassinated. Mm-hmm. It's one thing when... You tell somebody you want to debate them whether they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame what on their play, then you could accept that, okay? Right. But once people opened up so many things about him, I think he just, his natural reaction is, I'm going to fight back for who I am, right. my name. These people don't really know who I am. And I think that's always been the issue with T.O., what people thought from the outside mm-hmm. and what he has on the inside. I don't know him that well. I never got to cover him. I told you he came to my class to speak Mm -hmm. for an hour to the kids, and I thought he was very honest and open. And I got a a, a glimpse of what I feel was the real guy. Right. Which is a very sensitive guy when it comes to people talking about him. Right. And the Michael Irvin stuff, I know people say, why do you got to go there or whatever? It's public knowledge. He went through some issues. He cleaned his life up. But it's out there. Just like some of the other players that have gotten in the Hall of Fame, Lawrence Taylor mm-hmm. and whatnot, and people didn't seem, that didn't seem to bother them when it came for Lawrence Taylor and other players who had off the field issues to get in. It didn't seem to bother the writers at all. I, I don't remember anybody saying, well, how can you do this if Lawrence Taylor was doing that? There was a certain quarterback from Green Bay that got in, but we're not going to make, make right. it in. We but but, but it. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those things didn't seem to bother people, but for whatever reason, him being a quote-unquote diva and wanting the football, and maybe, and I'm gonna, not going to d- say that he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Some of the stuff that he would say, you wouldn't say about a teammate in public. It, it might be the real and right answer. Right. Who would you rather have, Brett Favre or Donovan McNabb? But I don't think you should say that. Especially when you're playing with a guy. When you're playing with a guy. <laughs> so did he make mistakes along the way? Yes, he did. Were they that terrible that people should keep out a guy who put together unbelievable numbers and played in the Super Bowl injured and, and had a tremendous game? The guy, I never doubted, A, whether he worked hard, B, whether he wanted to win or not, and C, that when he was out on the field, he gave his all. And I think that's what hurts him the most. You want to go? No, go ahead. Um, for me, I thought it was out of bounds, Robin. As I explained to Skip earlier, is that when you go to the Hall of Fame luncheon, the Ray Nitsky luncheon on Friday, Deacon Jones, or the great Deacon Jones, rest his soul, he would always stand up and he would tell us what he expected and what the Hall expected. And he says, now that you're in here with these room, in this room, he says, nobody's better than anyone else. He says, everybody that's in this room could catch 
everybody else in this room and can tackle everybody else in this room. So we don't, now we don't take shots at each other. We're on the same team. I thought it was out of bounds for the simple fact this is a teammate. We don't take shots at teammates. We don't take shots at family. We keep this in-house. Whatever T.O.'s feeling towards Michael, you can take it. Hey, take it to Michael. Michael, you've already voiced it. Hey, T.O. felt that he was having textual conversations with Michael Irvin. Michael was on the NFL Network. Michael showed those conversations to the, uh, to the, uh, to, to the TV watching land. And T.O. felt that Michael broke his trust. T.O. is very How hard. How would you feel if you were to oh, be, Yeah, I'd have been very upset. Yeah. Although, because, quick point of order, I'm pretty sure the text he showed on TV yeah. was Terrell just stating his position exactly word for word as to why he didn't go to... to I, 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 think, I think it's more had to do with trust. Had he got, yeah. had he got T.O.'s approval, yeah. T.O., you mind if I share this with the audience? But, but it keep, wasn't a negative text no, no, no. or, a, you know... Right, but yeah. te- if okay. I text you, Skip, or you text me... I don't think you'd be happy if it was on if I put it on social media. Uh, I think you would be the one who would not be happy. <laughs> <if I put. laughs> and, and, and that's the but you know, Skip. The thing is with Tio. No, I remember that, yeah, Skip. Okay. I remember that. He takes and I won't. <laughs> Tio don't. Tio takes everything personal. We know yeah. that, and that's what happened. He took what Michael said, even though this wasn't the harshest critique, this wasn't the harshest criticism. Mm-hmm. No, nope. he took it personal because Michael had betrayed his trust. And so, moving forward, anything that comes out of Michael's mouth and it references To, he's gonna look at it as a negative and trigger and he's him. Shoot back. Just, tr- and just he's trigger. Shoot back. So, I'm gonna remind everyone that the voting bylaws of the Pro Football Hall of Fame state that off-the-field behavior or misbehavior will not be factored into whether you're voted into the hall or not, right? To your original point about Lawrence Taylor, Brett Favre, whoever we're Mm -hmm. talking about. It took Michael Irvin three times to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Why was that, Mr. Sharp? Oh, I believe it. Strictly Mm -hmm. off the field. I covered Michael Irvin, Dallas teams that should have won four straight Super Bowls if the coach had stayed, maybe five or six for all (laughs) I know. They were that good, that loaded. And I covered Terrell Owens in San Francisco, and I know a lot of players who played with him and talked to many of them in Philadelphia and Dallas. And the irony of this conversation is Michael Irvin was the complete flip side of Terrell Owens. Michael Irvin, to me, was one of the great leaders in the history of sports. I'm not saying he's quite Shannon or Ray Lewis, but he was up there because that was a dynasty that he drove. He was the leader of those Dallas Cowboys. It wasn't Troy Aikman. It wasn't Emmitt Big Smith, name, big personality. It wasn't Charles Haley. It wasn't Darren Woodson. It wasn't Deion Sanders. It was Michael Irvin. He set the tone for that team on the practice field, in the weight room, on the sideline, in the huddle, and certainly on third and nine in Philadelphia or the Gi- at the Giants or at Washington. He was the one who ignited them. He was the rocket fuel of that whole football team because he played hard and then he partied hard. And I do not defend the partying because he had all kinds of issues off the field. So what Terrell tweets about is fact. Those it's are all undeniable, right. and it went beyond drug use. It went to womanizing and nightlifing and partying and it, all of the above. And it's why he got held out of the Hall Pro Football Hall of Fame for three times. Did Michael have a chip on his shoulder about it when it was time to go in? Did he accept it and embrace it? Oh, he yeah. loves the Hall of Fame as much as anybody. Who's oh, in absolutely, it, right? yes. He's become like the ultimate ambassador for the Hall yes, of Fame. Yes, yes. He, he is the life of that party mm-hmm. when you go up there every. The early August. But, prob- right? but probably because he probably thought he wasn't going to get in. You remember he cried like a baby well, when he got in. A lot of guys cry like no, a baby. No, I, but I think that there was, after the three yeah. years, well, t- that he questioned whether or not he was going to make it. So when yeah. he made it, he fully embraced it. Yeah. I just so, think so T.O.'s t- different. You brought up LT. To me, Michael Irvin was the Lawrence Taylor of wide receivers or of his generation because, you know, all that drug use, all that off the field, it did not affect for one second his ability to perform and lead on the field because Lawrence Taylor was the unquestioned leader. I covered that Giants guys. team. I was I, he not the guy? No he doubt was, about it. He, he was a game changer. Whew. He was a tr- transcendent player. Yeah, he's... He, he, who gave the speech to the sideline huddle before they went out on the field? We're going to go after him. What was he a, yelling like? A wild, dog. wild pack of dogs? A bunch dogs. of crazy dogs. Right. Okay? No, I'm... It's Lawrence Taylor. And, and again, boy, you can't defend his issues off the field because they're there. But did they factor in on the field? They did not. Yeah, but it, you, when you come to guys like LT, what he did on the field is so... Tra- Skip, people don't know this, but he was defensive rookie of the year 
and defensive player of the year. The same year. <laughs> nah, this is so just imagine the guy, yeah. uh, Raekwon Smith coming into the NFL, the linebacker Roquan. for the Bears, yep. Roquan Smith, yep. Yep. and he went defensive player of the year and defensive rookie of the year. We're not going to happen. Un- exactly, that's unheard of. No. I, I watched him up close. He was the MVP. He was he, unbelievable. He was he, the most dominant defender we've ever seen. Ever. Ever. He made, There's no doubt about he it. He made the left tackle famous. And he made the rush. He made the edge rusher famous. All these Von Miller and Khalil Mack, Derek Thomas is because of LT, mm-hmm. and all these uh, uh, Jason Peterson, Tyron Smith is because of LT. I, I agree. I get all that, but but I just think there's guys who are wired differently. Yeah. And I just think To is wired he, differently. He, he is. Yeah. And that's Look, why I think people I, I, can, I can't this, always connect with. I say him. it every time. The talent was undeniable. The production was undeniable. Yes. It's it's off the charts. Yes. It's right up there with Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. But he was the opposite of a leader. He was a solo act. He was more of a self-promoter. He was not addicted to drugs or alcohol off the field because he doesn't do any of that. He had no issues off the field at all. But he was addicted to the spotlight, to a fault. And the Terrell that I knew in San Francisco was as divisive a player as I ever covered in any sport because half the locker room would love him Mm -hmm. and half would despise him and come to me as a columnist in the Bay Area and say, how can you defend him? Because for a while I did. I was his lone defender for about almost two, a year and a half for sure. And then so many players came up and said, what are you doing? I, I don't know. Maybe I should think this. Sometimes, but sometimes I just wish I had been in San Francisco because I believe I, I would have handled T.O. differently uh, than probably Jerry handled T.O. Okay. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think mentorship then, is then the Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice okay. Yes, yep. I would have definitely handled that situation a lot different than, than Jerry Rice would have. Yep. Because I believe I just believe that when T.O., you got to, T.O., once he got to where he got and he was established, it's hard to turn him around yep. then. You got to get to him early and you got to talk to him. And when you see things starting to get, instead of just letting it go, that's not my problem, that's somebody else's. You, you take it upon yourself to go talk to the young yep. man. Skip, what was Reggie Jackson? I'm just, I, I'm trying to, he was another guy who was about himself, but a great player. Hey, when it was and time players to didn't like him. No, I, 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 I get, no, I know, but. Fought with Thurman Munson, had a fight but with but Billy Martin. But no, I'm just saying, a, a lot of people everybody didn't like not, Reggie. Everybody's not going to be Peyton Manning. Everybody's right. not going to be well-liked in the locker room. And that's okay. You do you. I mean, dude, we, we don't have to be friends, but let's be friendly. Mm-hmm. They ain't got to come over to my house because I damn sure ain't coming over to yours. We don't need to but, eat together. Right. We don't need but to we, do we all here, that. Let, right. let's, let's cohabitate. Let's okay. get along for the betterment of the team. Let's win game. Hey, you go your way. I go mine. Boom. We good. Okay. So the ultimate irony to this discussion is that the guy I used to call Team Obliterator even rejected the greatest team ever assembled, his team, the Hall of Fame team. He said, no, I don't want to be part of that. But, but and guess a- what happened? At the Ray Nitschke luncheon, players <laughs> only, the room is split like a locker room. Half of them are pro T.O. and half are saying, what are we doing here? You know, but, what? But, but why Why shouldn't he have the right to, to handle it the way he okay. wants? Well, he does. And it's nothing wrong with it. All right. When, when you, I got inducted for my play, right? My, my bust will be at, at, yep. in Canton and yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. I didn't throw a torch to the place, right. right? I didn't do any of that. I just think that he felt like he, he couldn't do it for whatever reason that was... His decision. I don't know why. You're mad, what, you're mad at him that he didn't go? You're not no, mad at no, him, are you? No. How could you be so, mad? It was are, his decision. That's his decision. I was that's going. his day. I'm going just to go talk trash. That's, a, that's <laughs> what you go. Yeah, that's right? what I go for. Yeah. And the free drinks? No. No? <laughs> it's just hard to understand because it's so sacred to so many people mm-hmm. why you choose to not be a part of this team. This the most elite team in the world. <laughs> it's like you getting a pull of surprise and say, nah, I should have got one for this other this other uh, article I did. Or like me not showing up to NABJ and the Yeah, story, yeah. I should have been oh, the, I, I should have been won this award. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a, hey, y'all give it to him, but I'm going to have my celebration. Why did you keep him out so long? I don't know. Exactly. That's a good question. You know, actually. Skip, 32 years. They kept me know. out a long time. I think you should take a stand against the organization. <laughs> right? Too late. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Rob. Okay, Jalen Ramsey went off and ripped pretty Whoa. much Ooh. every quarterback in the NFL. Ooh. I'm not making this up. You need to hear what he's saying. That's next. No mercy. 
So get this, Jalen Ramsey did not hold back when he was asked by GQ for his opinion of quarterbacks around the NFL. Ramsey said Bill's rookie Josh Allen is trash, Big Ben is decent at best, Matt Ryan is overrated, and Joe Flacco sucks. Ramsey was asked which QBs don't suck, and he said Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. And then he added Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz will be MVP candidates for the next decade. And Dak Prescott, nah, he's, quote, all right. <laughs> Well, like, he just continued uh, all of that. He just, every single quarterback. Shannon, what is your reaction other than what I just saw there? Damn, Jalen, they about to suspend you for another week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they might want to. I don't think they will, but they might think about it. Man, hey, it seems to me that the interviewer, like, once he asked him a question uh -huh. about the quarterbacks and he got very candid, he just started throwing out names. About what about Tannehill? Mm. What, what about Lamar Jackson? Yeah. What about this guy? What about that guy? Mm. And he's like, oh, he sucks. He trash. He garbage. Yep. <laughs> but this is him, Skip. Mm. This, is, this isn't a show. This isn't an act. This is who this young man is. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let me see what he say. He say, uh, he say <laughs> Deshaun Watson will be the MVP in a couple of years, 100%. There's not even a debate about that. Him and Carson Wentz, for every year starting now until five, ten years, it's going to be them two. Mm. They're that good. Dak Prescott, he all right. No, he okay. Wait, 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 you skipped over a line. What was the first True. line? He's it? good, he said. He's uh, good. He all right. Uh. He all right. Uh. He okay. That is what he said about the other two. Huh. Yeah, I mean, what, what a problem. We see, this is the problem that I have. We want our athletes to be open and honest until they're open and honest. And yeah. then they say they talk too much. But that's disrespect. I mean, he is saying someone sucks and is trash is not being honest. That's what, what disrespectful. Is it? is it true? I don't think it's true. I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing. It's a lot to say. You want him to be open and honest, so you got, you got, hey. Now, I know somebody that got elected president of the United States using this very rhetoric. Oh, oh Jalen Ramsey, you on your way, boy. You on your way. Wow. Jalen Ramsey, same sense with the president. Hey, he on his oh. way. Wow. <laughs> so, to your takeaway point, your big point, Jalen Ramsey needs to do this. He needs to heap pressure on himself because he's one of those cornerbacks. He wants the more pressure, the merrier, because he wants to have to with live up to the checks that he writes that he has to then cash on mm -hmm. Sunday after Sunday mm -hmm. after Sunday. And yet... There was some, some between the lines going on here. So let's, let's start with the big rips. Okay, I don't know how you could dismiss Josh Allen as trash when clearly <laughs> he has not watched Josh Allen. Because I'm pretty sure he didn't watch these games because, first of all, he refers to the game Iowa State, and it was at Iowa. Right. It, there's a big difference between Iowa State and mm -hmm. Iowa. They're two very different places to play. So at Iowa, he was pretty miserable, and I watched that game. And then I watched Oregon at Wyoming, and he had a QBR of, of seven in that game. He had a QBR of 30 against Iowa, and they were pretty miserable. Now, I don't know enough about Wyoming to tell you how good or bad Wyoming is. I don't think they're very good, so yeah. I don't think there's a lot of talent around him. Mm -hmm. But he didn't look like trash. He just looked overmatched, right. and there's a big difference between trash and overmatched. Because okay. if you're overmatched, man – and you're playing that position, is hard. Yeah. You're, you're going to look pretty off. You will look at yeah. especially if you go against a superior school, a team. Yeah. True. At Boise State, he looked a little better, but the Boise State was obviously better than they were. He had a QBR of 63, which wasn't bad, but he threw uh, a couple of more picks. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know about hella interceptions, hella turnovers. I'm not sure Jalen knew exactly what he was saying on that one. So that's, that's a reach to me. That's just – overstatement for overstatement's sake. That's like Jalen Ramsey is just doing a big magazine interview and he's just going to let it fly. What about Joe Flacco? Okay. Flacco sucks. I've never used the word <laughs> suck, but he just flat out, what do I call him? I've, I've called him Fluco for, what, six years yeah. now? And when he got that contract after that Super Bowl and how he did that, I don't know. Because, listen, he's he's been as good in the playoffs as you it, can find. As any quarterback, yeah. Whew. But during the regular season, he is fluco. So can we go with sucks? Ah, I'll, I'll give you sucks. Now, Big Ben, this is a shot now. Big Ben, he says, decent at best that he just slings it up for different people and that Antonio has made Big Ben. Well, Antonio hasn't been there all through Big Ben's career, and there are other receivers there, and he was pretty good. He got two Super Bowls without he Antonio did. Brown. He did. He got two. <laughs> so I think that's overstated and outrageously over the top. And – 
Matt Ryan overrated? I've said that on this show many times. Does that mean he's a bad quarterback? It does not. But is he overrated? Because he, he calls him last year, how do you go to complete bust from MVP? Well, I don't think Matt Ryan was a complete so. bust last year. They, they made the playoffs. He loves Aaron, but there's no question he loves Aaron Rodgers. He loves Tom Brady. Okay, He fine. thinks uh, Mariota. Okay. Uh, you know what? That's where I say there's method to that madness because does he not have to play against him twice a year? Mm -hmm. So he says he's a great quarterback for their team. For I the, don't think he is. For their team. Yeah. No, I don't so mean, you mean he fits the system. They're going to run the ball they're with Derrick Henry, and, Deion and, Lewis. And right. And he's going to run the ball. Right. And he's going to get beat up, and right. he's not accurate. Right. And I think Jalen Ramsey really enjoys playing against Marcus yes. Mariota because I think he views it as kind of a Sunday off. Yes. Because I don't think he's threatened deep by Marcus Mariota and what they have at, at wide out. So then we get to Deshaun. I get that. But Carson Wentz. No, no, so no, 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 no. He put Carson Wentz in the Hall of Fame. Has he played against Carson Wentz? In the, in, in his... Yeah, played against Dak either. Uh, so he has not played against Carson Wentz, but he put him in the Hall of Fame, and he hasn't played against Dak, and he said he's – all right. Right? All right. Yeah. A capital. A I okay. G. Well, that's not how this is spelled. There's an L in there. Nah, so he nah. He said nah, he's would... all right. No, he was in the barbershop when he did this. I don't know. They all right. But he did say Dak's good. He's all right. He's okay. So, how does he know that? Has he studied tape of Carson Wentz and Dak? I'm sure he has. I think not. Skip, here's the thing, though. But you have to look at it. Like, when he's breaking I down know. tape I, of other, te other guys, yep. he's looking at that offense. Sometimes. Yeah. If so it crosses over. Yeah. It doesn't always cross okay. over. Yeah. But, oh, well, it, but it, 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 when, when he's talking with some insight about a quarterback, it's because he's played against that quarterback because he knows Big Ben. He's but played he, him but here's the thing, though, Skip. Yeah. I find amusing. Had he said that Dak Prescott going to be great, mm -hmm. going to be MVP, yeah. I think you might be singing a different tune. Well, I just put Jalen in the Hall of Fame is all I would do. Why would you do that, Skip? I would not. <laughs> but I would not. Look, because I would say, ask the same question, and he knows I don't how. Know, I don't by know. By watching highlights? I mean, Skip, all Jalen Ramsey did is what we do on a normal basis. Just we that. just get paid for it. Jalen Ramsey don't get paid to do this. He get paid to uh, intercept, pass, and tackle people. But that's what we do. Well, maybe he thinks he'll get paid off the field because this will hype his I mean, brand. What do we do? We yeah. offer harsh and critical critiques mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of people's play. Yeah. That's what we do. Sometimes right and sometimes wrong. But they yeah. already know. I'm going to get yeah. to one. Yeah. Hey. No additives. Mm -hmm. They say no additives, no preserves over here. Mm -hmm. I give you straight Everclear. You do. 180 proof golden grain. Headshot, Jen. Mm -hmm. Headshot. Mm -hmm. But when you were playing, would you have been this harsh? On the re off the record or on the record? That's the difference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have taken occasional, you know, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. people, pro they provoke me. I never said anything with you. I wasn't provoked. Mm -hmm. If you provoke me, I might There was a certain lash defensive out. back for the Atlanta Falcons. Do you remember he that? provoked me. Yeah. And, you know, there have been other times that people provoke me. Skip, I'm really a nice guy. I really don't like – I don't really like to get outside of my character. I'm really nice. <laughs> I really am. Just, just, I mean, people just have me so confused. Well, Jen will attest to that. I mean, I just don't want to <laughs> get you on my bad side. I feel like this is working out. They, okay. I mean, you know, I, I'm really a nice guy. I'm mm. just – people just have me all wrong, Skip. I'm really not like that. I'm totally not. I'm mm. really – I'm really, really – I'm really a good guy. Everyone mm. vouch for me. Yep. Yeah, they'll vouch Except for, for me. Is that your nice guy voice? <laughs> yep. Uh, that's that's my his nice white guy voice. Yeah, that's my, that's my Walter yeah. kick lighter. Yeah, I mean, it's very... <laughs> oh, Jen, how are you? Mm -hmm. oh, we're back to that. Mm -hmm. Jen loves that voice, actually. <laughs> that's the You're voice, she, that's the up, voice she hears off the field. Oh, my God. You've taken it too far, no? Skip Bayless. Oh, thank you, Jen. Just a little too far. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. No mercy. Eagles offensive lineman Lane Johnson called out the Patriots big time after Philly's Super Bowl win, saying they're a, quote, fear-based organization with players who act like bleeping robots. Tomorrow night, the Eagles are on the road in New England for a preseason game, and not only is Johnson not taking back his statements, he's looking forward to the disdain from the Patriots fans. Take a listen. Are you expecting any type of uh, backlash, for lack of better words, for the comments that you've made? This oh, yeah. Season? I hope so. I hope they raise hell, they cuss me, and they can say whatever they want. And at the end of the day, I'm not blocking them. I'm blocking the guys on the edge. So it really doesn't matter what they say. I know that I'm not going to be well-liked. I know this team ain't going to be well-liked going in there. So that's going to make us, I think, bring out our best. Say any hope so. Okay, Shannon, do you agree with Lane's criticism of New England? My favorite. Oh. Next, next to my, or oh, walk it to him, my favorite eagle. Mm. He my second favorite. You mean limp it to him. No, don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. Uh, yes, I agree with him. 
Um, and Lane, not only <clears throat> he said it earlier, he doubled down on it. Skip, but there are a lot of players around the NFL that feel this very way, but there are very few of them willing to go on record and say this. You ask 25 Patriots the very same questions, you'll get the same 25 of the very same answers, just in a different tone. All you're going to do is just get it in Brady's voice or Gronk's voice or Slater's voice or McCord. That's what they do. This is who they are, the Patriot way. But the Patriot way is not the Eagles way or the Steelers way. It's hard to argue when you have the kind of success. Okay, this is the way we're going to do it. Coach Belichick is, mm -hmm. is right. This is what you're going to get. There's black and white. There ain't no gray. Mm -hmm. You know exactly where you stand with Coach Belichick. He's yep. going to coach everybody the exact same way. Mm. Okay, that works for him. But that's not necessarily how it's going to work, say, in Dallas or Philly or Pittsburgh or anywhere else, Skip. I think the, the, the thing that Mike Shanahan, my former coach, what he had to come to the realization is that he came from San Francisco. And you know how they do business in San Francisco. Coach Walsh had a, had a certain, and this is the way they did it. Well, he got, comes back to Denver, and then here I am. I'm a talkative guy. I'm having fun, joking around. And he tried to suppress that. And what, I said, Mike you got to let me be me. I'm going to show up for you on Sunday. I'm going to practice my tail off. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. But you trying to tell me to, to be quiet or not. I said, that's not me. I said, do you want me, all of me, or do you want part of me? Once he realizes, you know what? Let me trust. Let me see. Everything was fine. I kept the locker room loose. But when it came time to work, 84, get them going. Mm. So with that being said, Lane Johnson said, man, look, I mean, they don't say nothing. They, 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 they looked down on us. They was talking bleep to us. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go ahead and put that work on them. Mm -hmm. But Skip, you know they're methodical. You know they're robotic. This is Gattaca. Hmm. Same thing, just carbon copy. You remember that Ethan Hall had a yeah, I know it very well. I'm not sure many in our audience <laughs> know, but that's okay. Yeah, because you and I, we mm -hmm. see every movie that mm -hmm. comes out. Yep. But that's the thing. And, and not to say that there's something wrong with it, but he's not lying in his assessment. Mm -hmm. That works for New England. Skip, Chad Johnson didn't forget how to play football. He just got there, and he wasn't able to be himself. He couldn't come up with no gags. You know, he couldn't do no funky dances and have the fun that he wanted to have. And so all of a sudden, he gets there and like, what happened? How did he just drop off a cliff? Hmm. Well, that place, New England, is not for everyone. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, go win. Okay, you want to win, but you will need to win your way. Mm -hmm. And Coach Belichick says you're going to win my way. Okay. So it's not for everybody. So I have no problem with what Lane Johnson said, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to watch the game tomorrow night because I'm going to watch him putting the mitts on somebody. Mm. He talking like that because guess what, Skip? They ain't got an edge rusher that can see him. Mm. Now, see, if that was had to do against Vaughn Miller or J.J. Watt, maybe he'd be a little bit more reserved. But since he playing those guys up there, say, so y'all can't see me. They don't have an edge rusher. They, <laughs> they don't have anybody. I <laughs> don't. No, they don't. Mm. Maybe if they had Chandler Jones, maybe he he wouldn't say that. But hey, you know it is easy to talk when you hung forty one on them and yeah, the season, right? Now he's about to go and hang like mm. thirty five on them in their building. <laughs> so you know it strikes me as amusing that Lane Johnson from a he's small, Oklahoma small noise in Texas. No, he, he went to, yeah, he went to Oklahoma. So show him respect. Died in the wool OU fan, but I'm not a fan of this guy. What? Small oh, town wow. Texas, hundred so miles from Houston. And has he not put himself on the national map with this Patriots are robots stance? Yeah. He, he should take this act on the road. He should take <laughs> it to Vegas and do Patriots are robots. And it, it'd probably sell out, right? He's funny. He can really go. He can talk. But I think he's talking a lot of noise and a lot of nonsense and a lot of baloney that he doesn't really believe. And it's easy to talk when you did hang 41, but the, the, he started off with, this is right after the Super Bowl, he said, I'd much rather have fun and win a Super Bowl than be miserable and win five Super Bowls. I, I don't know about that, Lane. I'm just not sure about that. So look, to be fair to him, if he's speaking from a position of spite or wounded pride, I, I'll give him that because he continues to say that Kraft was trash talking Lurie. I, I don't know what it was. I, I, I don't know any details. I think it was of Coach it. Belichick. Okay. Coach Belichick said something that came off as arrogant. Yes. Oh, you had a good season. Yeah. You had a good season. You had. Yeah. Maybe it was the past yeah. tense of it. <laughs> I don't know, but he will not let go of that, even though we don't know any more details about that. There's no other right. reporting on that. But just, just for the record, I worked around several expatriates at ESPN. Teddy Bruschi, mm -hmm. did he have fun playing for the Patriots? He had a blast, man. It was like a religious experience mm -hmm. for him because 
he had to beat you a little more with his head and his heart than, than his natural, innate, yeah. God-given talent, right? right? Mm-hmm. And he just thrived in that Belichick defensive system. Correct. And, and he loved it, and he misses it to this day. Mm-hmm. And then you look at Matt Light, you know, really a good football player, mm-hmm. left tackle. Yes. Fun-loving, easygoing, happy-go-lucky. He had a good time playing for the Patriots. Right. He has a good time everywhere he goes. So robotic, I think not. Damian Woody, just about as easygoing as you'll ever mm-hmm. find. Robotic, not to me. His own man, his own thinker, n- yeah. Now, I get it. There are rules with the media where you stay between the lines. Right. You say only this. Rob Gronkowski says only this, but off the field, does he have a good time? Oh, yeah. He's great party match. hearty, right. man. Right? Right. Okay. But I think the thing is, Skip, look, everybody can't be the 2,000 Ravens. We went to the Super Bowl and we didn't have curfew. We didn't have bed check. Mm-hmm. Everybody can't do that, Skip. But to each his own. I'm not knocking this. And I guess Lane is looking at it like, man, I'm trying to carry on a conversation. I, it, and he's looking at it from a distance. And to him, when he hears interviews, and this guy said the same thing that guy said, and that guy said the same thing this guy said, he's like, that ain't no fun. Hmm. But wh- where's, the, where's your individuality? Where's your own personality? I don't see any of that. All I see is golly shucks, RGs, whiz, Tom hmm. in front of the camera. But he, he mofoed it up off the camera when he's doing the uh, Tom versus time. So you having fun off? off well, I need some field. of that. I, I, I so. need some of that. Does he post some silly stuff on social media? He but, does. Mm-hmm. I guess the mm-hmm. thing is, Lane says he wants to see more of a personality. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's really hard to say, Skip, because when you and when you you talk about Teddy and you talk about Woody and you talk about uh, uh, Matt Light, is that they got drafted there, so that's kind of like all they know. It was probably a lot harder for someone to, to go somewhere else mm-hmm. and then go and ingratiate themselves in that situation because you get, you know, coached a certain way and then you go there. It's totally opposite. What helped me was I came in under Dan Reeves. He was uh, uh, too, he learned under Tom Landry. I, I know Dan very well. Uh, old I, school. I watched it up close. Yep. So Dan's about as old school as you get. And I would say that wouldn't be real fun to play for him. It was, Not real fun. It, it was hard. Yep. It was hard. But when we got, when Wade came in, we lost the first round and uh, lost the uh, wild card round in 93. Wade didn't think we were tough enough. Wade Phillips. Wade yeah. Phillips. Who, yeah. uh, so we had eight straight days, two a days, mm-hmm. padded practices, 16 total practices. Mm-hmm. But for me, Skip, I had with Dan. So we practiced in pads every single day. Yeah. So it was nothing to me. But for someone that came from another place, they're like, what the hell going on? Bruh, you better get in the cold tub and get ready to go again tomorrow. Hmm. That's what's going on. I want to know how much fun most teams in the NFL have in the end. How much fun is it to play in the NFL? It's hard, man. Yeah, it is. I'm watching hard knocks with the Cleveland Browns. Those those camp practices, that's, that's hard, man. It all depends. If you got your old Shea Sharp, he'll make that thing fun. Um, he going to make it real fun. I'll bet there are some camp practices where you were no fun. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know I got to get a couple of jokes in. And, yeah. Man, Sharp, you crazy. Man. Mm. Skip, I got to keep it light. Man, you out there two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. It's 100 hard. degrees. You got on all that stuff. I got to keep it light, Skip. I'm going to lose my mind. Mm. So, it's going to come across that I'm trying to kill the messenger, just like I accused Terrell yeah, you, of trying you try, to kill yeah, yeah. the Michael Irvin messenger. But, look, how much fun was Lane Johnson having before last year? Because twice before, he got suspended for PED use. Oh, once for, wait a whoa. second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Once for four games and once for ten games. What does that indicate to you? That indicates desperation. That indicates fighting for survival in the National Football League. That does not indicate... You know, ha- having fun. Wait right? a minute, having Skip. A blast, right? You just killed T.O. I'm just saying. No. I'm, trying, I'm putting this in the context of, was he having fun until this past year? Did he? Was he? I, yes. Was oh, no. he? Wait a minute, was Skip. He? Oh, wait a minute. You're not answering my question. No, no. I, I, was he having fun? N- no, he losing was Losing isn't what, fun. He was doing what every player in the league is doing. It's desperation. It's d- doing, by any means Skip, possible, this, I'm going to survive this, this in this over, league. That's overkill, Skip. Uh-uh. It's yeah, you. Truth. You it's killed a man with a sledgehammer. No, I did not. I'm just stating a fact, and those are two big facts. That contributes to on-the-field performance. So he was so desperate to keep his job, to survive in the National Football League, he twice resorted to P. Did not once. Once? Okay. Oh, well, wait, what where, where is this coming from? Where is it coming from? Hold on. He, Jenny. Mm-hmm. 
Lane Johnson said the Patriots are robotic. Mm-hmm. It's give, you go all He's the way. saying through. I'd rather have fun and win one Super Bowl. I'm, I'm asking you again. How much fun was he having? How many years? He got drafted in 2013. So that's that's like, what, five years in there? Why he you, wasn't having any fun? That's Skip Bayless. Yes, not. That's Skip Bayless. Uh, that's twice you've done that. Now, you jumped on LeBron James when he when he uh, uh, dug up about Charles Barkley. That you, was killed the man. You, you, you just jumped on uh, 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 T.O., and you just did the same thing to Lane nope. Johnson. I'm, I'm in the context of, were you having fun? Nope, he was not having fun. Oh, oh. So what happened last year? The magic carpet ride happened. The planets aligned. It happens every once in a while. You've been through it before. Yeah. Where all of a sudden, you go get Alshon, and you get Torrey Smith. And all of a sudden, everything comes together. And Carson Wentz starts to figure it out. And you get on a roll. And all of a sudden, you get... Jay Ajayi to go with LeGarrette Blunt, And all of a sudden, your rushing attack goes to third in the league. And it clicks everywhere. Just, and the defense is clicking. And what happens? You I, get the break of, of not the century, of the last two centuries. Nick Foles comes in for Carson Wentz and takes over the playoffs. And all of a sudden, you get the ultimate Super Bowl break. Bill Belichick, the wizard, the master, the genius, decides not to play Malcolm Butler for the entire Super Bowl and gives up 41 points to Nick Foles. That, those are all the breaks that you got so that you could have fun and win a championship. It takes that. I just believe you could have provided the context mm-hmm. without dragging up this mm-hmm. man's dirty laundry, yeah. Skip Bayless. You got a grin on your face while you're no, I just, mm-hmm. because okay. I, because this is this is this is beyond me, Skip. Uh, I mean, you you went way not back. Beyond me. I, I didn't know go way not. back. You did. It was just t- a year ago. He got suspended for ten games. But Skip, ten games. Uh, w- was he having a blast? Was it just fun and games? And Phil, nope, it was not. Well, he, he had different coaches, right? Skip. Was it fun have under you, Chip Kelly? You ever, you ever hang, hung anything on the wall? Mm-mm. I don't hang anything on you, the wall. You hung something. Well, not well, but a But I was just saying, <laughs> you know, they have, like, like have tack nails. Yeah. They have spike nails. So for a tack nail, you use a tack hammer. Mm-hmm. For a spike nail, you use a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. You just hung something on the wall with a tack nail using a sledgehammer. Skip, mm-hmm. that was unnecessary. What your grandfather said. That's what he said. Yeah. That was unnecessary oh, what you I did. I was paying attention to what you said about your grandfather. I, Lane, I apologize mm-hmm. for my co-host. Mm-hmm. He didn't mean what he said. He meant exactly <laughs> what he said. You, you broke up that man past, Skip. Are we having fun yet? Oh, now you're having fun, and now you're saying the Patriots you, have no fun. I think the Patriots have lots of fun. They especially have fun when they get to hold that trophy. Up. I know what you call them having fun. Old Lane, they ain't got no trophy now. Huh? Hold on, let me ask you a question do, about the Patriots. Do you really think what? Eagles going to repeat as Super Bowl champions? Because I don't. Let me ask you a question. Skip. I think Lane Johnson's going to be a one and done w- Super Bowl. When winner. did that's the, what's going to happen? When did the Patriot way come into existence? Was it a Patriot way in two thousand? What about the first eight I think and nine? It came into uh, at, when Tom Brady took. Well, when they start, when they won, we started winning Super Bowl. Now exactly. we got away. Yeah, we got away now. Yeah. Okay. But before then, we ain't have no way. Well, they didn't we just have tried to play because Bill Belichick was basically a disaster as a we, head coach. Yeah, we didn't have no. We wasn't a Patriot way. We just trying to find a way. Come on, Skip. Well, I can't Bill, believe. Bill why Belichick, would you do that? I just did it. He I went to Oklahoma. I just told you 15 times why I did it. You love See, Oklahoma. I'm, I'm objective when when it comes to my teams because. I'm going to single out a player who played for the school that I grew up loving, and I don't care. I'm going to be objective. But you don't love Oklahoma as much as you love Tom Brady. And if anybody covered Tom Brady, if anybody covered Tom Tom Brady, you you shield up for him. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I think what I said was dead on right. No. You just said that was overkill what T.O. did with Michael Drag, dragging up his drug Mm path. Now you drag up this man bringing PEDs Mm -hmm. into the equation. That was unnecessary, Skip. I believe you could have provided context Mm -hmm. without PEDs. Yeah, Terrell loves you. It's okay. <laughs> He'll probably test you right now. Way to go, Shannon. No mercy. We're going to stick to talking about <laughs> Philadelphia because Carson Wentz said it's, quote, going to be close if he can start week one against the Falcons. So the Eagles' alternative is uh, the Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles. Wentz is not medically cleared for contact and has been restricted to seven-on-seven drills in practice. Everybody is getting involved in the QB debate in Philly, including... The mayor who gave his opinion on who should start to TMZ. Let's hear it. Who's starting? Is it Wentz or Foles? What do we what do we got? I would rather Foles. I'm not Doug Peterson, of course, but I think Wentz the knee injuries are strange. Uh, and you need to make sure that they're fully recovered before. I know Wentz will be chomping the bit to start, and that's a good that's a good uh, a good 
environment to be in that they will both want to start. Uh, but I think just to be safe falls probably. I love how the mayor just, you know, got to get involved there. Okay, Shannon, is this going to be an issue for the Eagles? It certainly could be. If I'm the Eagles, I'm going to err on the side of caution. If Carson Wentz is not 100% healthy, he's not starting. He's the future. But it could be a problem. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Carson misses the first month. Skip that 4-0, and, and Foles has eight touchdowns, one interception. How do you take him out of the lineup? There's a reason why Tom Brady did not want Jimmy Garoppolo to get any snaps. There's a reason why for like 17 years, Peyton Manning took every mm. single snap. There's a reason why Joe Montana didn't want Steve Young to get any mop-up duty, Skip Bayless. Tom Brady understood how he got the job. Carson Wentz is looking like, hold on, I don't really want this guy in there because the guy, this, he did. Mm. The last game he played, he won the Super Bowl. He's the Super Bowl MVP. Yep. He went to Disney. Mm. Do I really want that in there? Mm. We've, seen, we've seen this happen before, Skip. I tell you what, there is a guy that's in this profession right now, Skip, for that very reason. He got hurt. He started the season on the bench, and guess what? He's in the booth right now. His name is Tony Romo. Ask him, could it be a problem if you start the season injured and a guy comes in and plays well? Could it be a problem? Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Now, that was Dak Prescott, a rookie. What do you think happens if the Super Bowl MVP yeah. plays well? Mm. I know Doug Peterson. They traded up. They moved heaven and earth to get Carson Wentz. But it's hard for me to believe, Skip Bayless, the Eagles start out 4-0 and, 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 and Foles has played well. I don't know how they go back to Carson Wentz in this situation. Mm. So it absolutely could be a problem mm. if Foles get, gets out and plays well. Mm. But, if I'm, but if I'm Carson Wentz, I'm unmoved by that. Mm. I'm worth more healthy hmm. than injured. Because I know this for certain. Mm -hmm. I'm the long-term fix. Mm. So, allow me to say that this is the first time I can ever remember a mayor speaking about football intelligently, because usually they try and they're making silly yeah. bets with the other mayor, and they don't really get it, yeah. and they, they sound foolish when they try to talk about their team. He got a bunch of clam chowder last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of them. He got yeah. a big old pot. Thanks to Malcolm Butler. Don't right. do that, Skip! Yeah. So I found the comments of one Jim Kinney when I watched him last night, the mayor of Philadelphia. I found them refreshingly intelligent and insightful and savvy and plugged in because the response that really told it all for me was when the interviewer asked him, well, what do you think of all the talk about trading Nick Foles? He just jumped all over and he said, no, oh, you, you can't trade the Super Bowl MVP. Mm -hmm. Boom. Sure bingo. you can. No, you cannot. Yeah, you can. They because traded Brett Favre. They traded a, a, a Dion yeah, Branch. Yep. Yeah. Jim <laughs> Kenny knows what's up. He, he does speak, I think, for a lot of knowledgeable, plugged-in Eagles fans, and there are many of those out there. It's a very savvy Eagles nation, and I take shots at them or have fun with them and trash talk with them occasionally, but I do respect their football knowledge because they love their Eagles, and they get and know their Eagles and how the game is played. And they know, deep down just what the mayor knows. They know that Nick Foles played some extraordinary playoff football. Yes. The likes of which I don't think we've ever seen before. He played back-to-back -back games that very possibly are the two greatest quarterback games we've ever seen back-to-back -back in the playoffs. I'll agree. NFC Championship game, Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yep. What? That's impossible. And he did it. And obviously, to this moment, Carson Wentz has played exactly zero playoff football. Not one snap he's Until taken. Until this year. Well, okay. But all right, we'll see about that. But this has never happened before. We've never seen a situation like this. And I've told you from the start, it's not really a quarterback problem because it's, it's a good problem to have. Anybody would want this problem on their team. But it's a quandary that could be the undoing of the young quarterback you love so much. Because I'm going to say it again, as we get closer and closer to game number one, real game number one, mm -hmm. I feel sorrier and sorrier for Carson Wentz. Because Why? the tape I see on him, I see conflicting stories on a daily basis. Oh, he's 100% healthy. He's really moving. And then the next guy I see somebody say, you know, True. he's a little limpy. He's just a little, like, well, he's, he's a little tender. Doug Peterson says still yeah. in the back of his mind. Okay. And you, right. yeah, well, it, how could it not be? Yeah. He, t he yeah. tore his knee to shreds. Yeah. ACL and, he, and LCL. And, and LCL, right? Or was it MC, MCL? LCL. 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 Okay. LCL. Well, 
That's a lot of stuff that and happened. He, and, he, and he threw a touchdown on it. Yeah. On one crazy. leg, like Tiger. Like Tiger mm-hmm. won the U.S. Open on one leg. He threw a touchdown mm-hmm. on one leg. So I'm going to remind everybody outside Eagles Nation what all the Eagles fans already know, that in regular season football games, Nick Foles has thrown 61 touchdowns to only 29 interceptions. Okay. That's extraordinary. It's very you can't good. find that. It doesn't Two to grow, one is great. It doesn't grow on trees. In the postseason, he's now 3-1 and one as a starter. Not a huge body of work, but he's 3-1 and one and easily could have won the one against Drew Brees his first year starting for mm-hmm. Chip Kelly mm-hmm. because he played well enough to win the game, and it took Drew Brees, big kickoff return, late drive, field, walk-off field goal to beat Nick Foles. So he's very close to being 4-0, and oh, and he's 8-1 to one in the postseason touchdowns to interceptions. That's, that's Rogers esque. That's pretty great, man. That's Brady esque. Rogers that is, and so everybody knows that for the first time ever, Carson Wentz has had he's had no threat to his job. Certainly his his first two years of starting. Right? That, that, that's normally what happens, Skip. When you get a guy, you find him. You don't bring someone in to challenge him. For, did they bring someone in to challenge Dak for his job? Of course no, not. But it, it was upside down, just like Tyrod and Baker Mayfield are upside down because right. they'd already signed Tyrod when right. they decided, oh, yeah. let's take Baker, right? But they were high up in the draft, Skip. Yeah. They need, they, listen, let's not forget, Nick Foles was a year away. He was thinking about retiring. Mm-hmm. And it was, he, Doug Peterson had him in Kansas City. When he got the job back to go back to Philly, he's he like, bro, come on. You know my offense. Okay, so. Was there any threat to Carson's job the first year when he really struggled and went 7-9 and nine and had the 24th no. worst QBR in the league? No. Nope, no threat. Did he ever think, I'm going to get benched if I don't play better? Nope, not at all. Last year, got off hot, stayed hot. Well, I think roll. Nick Foles last year was Nick Foles' first year back in yeah. February. Right? Okay, yeah. but there was zero threat no. because, to your point, then he had bounced around to St. Louis and Kansas City. If Carson Wentz was healthy, would there be a threat? If he came back healthy right now? Yes. Heck yes, there'd be a threat. The the pressure has mounted exponentially now on Carson Wentz because you have to play. These fans, as you know, they're probably the quickest to boo in all of pro football. So you don't think they'll boo Carson Wentz if he gets off wrong, if he throws three interceptions? Yeah, so what do you you think will happen to Nick Foles if he throws three interceptions? Okay, well, the same thing would happen, obviously. But now you have a quandary because you have one guy – who just owned the playoffs, and another guy who's not played a single playoff down, but who owned the regular season last year. He just year. needs to get healthy. He can't let Nick Foles winning the Super Bowl. He can't let Nick Foles possibly starting and keeping him on the sidelines. Okay, Help is the most important thing. My point to you is he has been able to play freely for two full seasons until he got hurt last year. Yeah. You can't play freely anymore. You know, if you, if you rush back, quote unquote, Mayor says, don't rush. Yeah. But let's say you do because you're a competitor and you say, I got to hold on to my job. I can't give Nick Foles this chance. And you push Doug Peterson and the training staff and the Mm-mm. medical staff. You just say, hey, Mm-mm. I'm OK. I, I need to go game one. And you go out there and stink it up. You know and I know what's going to happen. No, it's it's going to rain booze. It's not going to happen. Yep. Carson Wentz knows. He says deep down, I'm a better quarterback than Nick Foles. Well, he and he think that, but I'm not sure that's the case. That, that's very much I, the case. I don't case. believe Nick Foles – I mean, Carson Wentz could have done what Foles did in the playoffs that's last true. year. You want to talk about poise under fire? He'd probably have about seven touchdowns against that Patriots defense. I, I'm going to remind oh. you, do, do you realize what Nick Foles did to the number one ranked defense in pro football? Your Minnesota Vikings? And yes. Torch. <laughs> And walk in, what do you think walking to him would have done? He was number I don't one. No, he was number one in QBR. I've told you, I don't love him. Do, I don't love his pocket. Do you love? Boys. Do you he love? It's a little do, frantic. Do you, do you love QBR? Yeah. Okay, who's number one in QBR? Well, who's had the best QBR of the two young quarterbacks over the last two years? I just, I go, it's Dak I go Scott year to by year. Far, I go year to year. Far. I go year to year. Yeah. So Carson Wentz would have finished first if he had finished. He, he did finish, finish first. Well, he didn't finish yeah, here. Skip. You got to finish. No, 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 no. Yeah. He had enough attempts yeah. to qualify. Yeah. And you so, gave Dak Prescott an F for his performance last year, and he plummeted all the way to fourth in, in NFL QBR. Plummeted. The, really? number, the, the, the way I evaluate quarterback, Jenny, yeah. I don't use passer rating. I don't use QBR. Mm-hmm. I use wins and losses. No, you use uh, eye tests. I use wins and losses. Okay, and my eye test, is told, my eye I, test I should, told me. I, I spoke wrong. You use heart test. No, no, no. Eye test. Eye test. You do. And my, I hate I, Cowboys, so I got to love Carson Wentz. I see better when than I hear. When in your life have you ever loved the Philadelphia Eagles, and all of a sudden you have to 
because you hate the Cowboys. You know, Jenny, my grandfather used to tell my brother and I, I mm. see better than I hear. Mm. Now, y'all told me mm. y'all were going to take that trash out. Mm. But then when I look in the corner, I still see it there. Mm. So I know what you told me, yeah. but I know what I see. I see better than I hear. I see old I cars. hear you talk about walk it to him. Oh, walk it to him. I see Nick Foles own the playoffs, yeah. own them. That's only like no one's ever owned. That's only because wow. of Walker Tim or Walker to him was injured at the Walker time. Walker to him's in big trouble. No, he's not. Yeah. No, he, he's not. He's going to crumble under this pressure. Mm -hmm. I feel for you. This want kid. that to happen? I Why do you? Yeah, you do. It's going to happen. I'm sorry. It's happening right before your very eyes. No, it's not. The mayor summed it up. You can't trade oh, the so Super Bowl so MVP. Na, so now the mayor is James Andrews. Mm. <laughs> he what like, the hell, Skip Bayless? Mm. And they can trade the MVP. Let me ask you a question. How did Joe Montana get to Kansas City? Well, he was. Old. They said you're too old. Mm. And he took he yeah. he was isn't he the last Kansas City it, it, quarterback to win a playoff game? It's the way Tom Brady would have gotten to Kansas City when Bill Belichick tried to just send him into the sunset. And night. Joe my old Joe is yep. the last Kansas City quarterback yep. to win a playoff game. Yep. That was in nineteen ninety three. Oh okay. Old Joe. Yep. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. What about old Brett Farr? what's your point? They is traded Nick, Super Bowl is, MVP. Is Nick Foles old? Yeah. He's, he's just entering his prime. Oh, now he's in his prime. Well, he's entering it. He's just yeah. starting. He's coming off his three prime. Te he's three teams in oh. three years. Well, now, I'm, now, I'm, now you love Nick Foles. Now you want him to can. Is he like twenty eight? Now you know. stop it, Skip Bayless. Huh? Now you want him to can. Huh? You are. You. Well, that was <laughs> Canton esque. Canton? You gotta admit. Yeah, I mean yeah. the Philly specials in Canton. He uh. threw seven touchdowns one year. Uh, uh, that jersey of cleats mm. in Canton. But yeah. you need to stop. You know, walk it to him special. I don't know. He's that. Winston a lifetime. I never, saw, I never saw special. I still don't see special. Yeah, and he's Winston a lifetime. Nick Foles was special last year. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. We're taking Thursday off, but be sure to keep an eye out for a special edition of the podcast tomorrow morning. Take care. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one.